One of the areas that Children's Medical Center is especially noted for uh, is the diagnosis and treatment of sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia. This is one of the most common forms of anemia that we as children's blood specialists encounter. In fact, it's the most common serious genetic disorder in the world, so it's a major problem. It affects individuals primarily of African ancestry, although it is seen in Hispanics and occasionally Caucasians as well, as well as people from South Asia and the Middle East. Now this is a condition uh, where, the, where the children are anemic, so their blood count is low, but they have another problem. The, the red blood cells in sickle cell disease, as, as the name implies, are curved like a sickle, and they're very stiff, very rigid, and they clog up the blood vessels in the body. And that results, first of all, in the red blood cell count dropping, so they're anemic and they, they're tired and fatigued from their low blood count, but they also have problems with the blood vessels being blocked in that they have pain because when the blood vessels are blocked, the oxygen can't get into the tissues and that causes severe pain. It also causes damage to various organs in the body, the lungs, the kidneys, the spleen, the brain stroke is a common problem in sickle cell disease. So this really can be a very, very serious disorder. Now, this is an area that I've been very interested in for over three decades in trying to find better treatments for children with sickle cell disease to really uh, allow them to live a more normal life. Children's was one of the first centers in the United States. In fact, I think we were probably the first back in the late 1970s to recognize the importance of severe infection that these children develop. And that's because the spleen, which is a spongy organ inside the abdomen, is like a filter. It filters and removes bacterial germs from the bloodstream. Well, the spleen is damaged in sickle cell disease, so these children at a very young age are at risk of overwhelming fatal infection due to bacterial germs. We were the first center in the United States to begin regular penicillin treatment of every child with sickle cell anemia because, in fact, the germ that causes fatal blood poisoning can be destroyed by penicillin. And Everybody now does this. There have since been studies done that have confirmed our initial observations here. So the standards now of, of treating children with sickle cell anemia include the use of penicillin. That, that simple antibiotic, inexpensive and, and safe, as well as special vaccinations that we give to children with sickle cell anemia, uh, has made a huge difference so that the survival in sickle cell anemia now is 95% of these children make it to adulthood, whereas in the past there were very few who survived after 10 or 15 years of age. Uh, so children's in, in, in Dallas is really very well known for, being, for defining the improved uh, outcome and natural history of children with sickle cell anemia as a result of, of, of the antibiotics and the other special uh, treatments that, uh, that we give them here. There remain some challenges though. This is still, most children still cannot be cured. The only cure available now is with a bone marrow transplant. We and some other centers around the country have done that, but it's still, uh, still experimental in many ways and very few children can, uh, can, can, can get that treatment. But there are some very promising advances. One of them is a drug or medicine called hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea is a pill or there's a liquid form for young children that's taken once a day. And what this does, it prevents the red blood cells from taking on this rigid sickle shape. So it makes them flow more normally, flow in the, in the bloodstream more normally, it corrects the anemia, the blood count rises, and this has had a major impact in both children and adults. Uh, not a cure, but it benefits them and reduces the amount of pain, reduces the organ damage, and allows them to live a more normal life. In addition to the hydroxyurea and the penicillin and the, and the pain medicines and other treatments that we give, a very important part of our treatment is blood transfusions. Uh, first of all, blood transfusions are very safe nowadays. The risks of AIDS and hepatitis and severe reactions to the blood are very, very, very low. In fact, giving blood transfusions on a regular basis really only has one significant complication, and that's buildup of iron in the body, because the body has no way of getting rid of the iron that's in the blood. Now, there are medicines now that we can deal with that and can remove iron from the body. So we're much more liberal now in using blood transfusions for children with sickle cell anemia. And it's been shown that by giving regular blood transfusions on a monthly basis that we can prevent these children from getting stroke, from getting damage to their lungs, from having severe pain. 
And in fact, most of the other complications of sickle cell anemia can be totally eliminated or greatly reduced by regular transfusions. So what's exciting now uh, here at Children's is the treatment options we can offer to these children now uh, are multiple. Certainly the antibiotics to prevent infection, hydroxyurea to raise the blood count and reduce the, the crises and other damage, regular blood transfusions as a means of preventing complications, and research on bone marrow transplant uh, in order to cure the disease. So it's very exciting that uh, these children increasingly are offered the opportunity of uh, entering adulthood and leading a normal life.